If Vladimir Putin wants a face-saving solution for the crisis he cooked up over Ukraine, he should take a look to Switzerland and to what was done with Austria back in the 1950s. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Is Vladimir Putin having second thoughts about his attempt to intimidate and take control of Ukraine? Who knows what Russia's ruler for a life will do? But some observers believe he wants to avoid an actual military conflict. The problem for Putin is that Ukraine is on to any schemes to seize Kiev by a lightning airborne coup or crippling the country with cyber attacks. If he invades with troops, he will be resisted. However belated the responses from the West have been to Putin's troop movements, they are enough for him to know that a seizure won't be costless, as he originally thought. Sure, any sanctions imposed in response to an invasion won't bring Russia to its knees, but they will hurt. They will also create enormous political pressures in Washington for a massive military buildup of the kind we've not seen since the late 1970s and early 1980s in reaction to Moscow's invasion of Afghanistan. That buildup was a critical factor in the demise of the Soviet Union a few years later. Such a major expansion in U.S. defense spending won't be welcomed by Beijing. So, what to do about the current crisis? Putin says he doesn't want Ukraine to become a member of NATO. He claims, with a straight face, that he fears having a hostile Ukraine on his border. Of course, everyone knows Kiev is not about to march on Moscow. The face-saving diplomatic solution, if Putin wants one, is to proclaim in a treaty that henceforth Ukraine will be a neutral country, much like Switzerland is today. Switzerland is not part of the European Union, nor a member of NATO. Switzerland didn't even join the UN until a few years ago. Ukraine would thus not be pro-US or pro-Russia in its foreign policy. It could have a strong military, as Switzerland does, but it wouldn't become a member of NATO. Like Switzerland, it could expand trade with Europe, but it would not join the European Union. Back in the 1950s, Austria, having been part of Germany during World War II, was under occupation by the U.S., Russia, Britain, and France. But in 1955, the Allies agreed to end the occupation, with Austria being totally neutral between the U.S. and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. It would be a buffer between East and West. Something similar could be done with Ukraine. That way, Putin could declare he saved Ukraine from the U.S., the EU, and NATO, and he could pull back his forces, including those in eastern Ukraine. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again.